Hello, welcome back. Our next speaker is Felipe Pires. He's actually going to be talking about exploitation with reverse shell and infection using PowerShell and VBS files. So without any further ado, I pass it to Felipe. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining in our conversation. Today, we're going to talk about exploitation with shell reverse and infection with the PowerShell using VBS file, right? So this is my contact and Twitter. My name is Felipe Pires, and I would like to share with you my contact on social medias. I can use a lot of Twitter and GitHub. Here I have some projects. By the way, I have this project published there and another uh, project that I have been, you know, doing. And my LinkedIn, if you'd like to, you know, share the message with me and uh, exchange knowledge with me. And I have here my web page with, uh, you can find there some talks that I'm doing some events that I, you can find some event uh, articles that I published and uh, some information about me. Let me introduce myself. I'm a principal security engineer at TalkDesk. TalkDesk is a company from Portugal responsible to sell uh, a product with a contact center as a service, CCAAS, CCAS, right? So a contact center as a service. I'm a, sec a security researcher at Senha Segura, Senha Segura International Company. Um, responsible to provide some PAN solutions and privilege access management solutions and all those things related to a zero trust. In my security research in these companies, and uh, my job there is, you know, to make a research about security related to a more analysis, what kind of attacks uh, related to exploitations, these attackers have been using different techniques or different approaches in this uh, exploitation that attackers have been used. And I'm advocate of the hacking is not a crime, very known product here in the US and in the Europe. And I'm advocate from Brazil here. And this project is awesome for me. And um, because the idea of this project is to talk about the mindset, about the future, about the life cycle, because hacking is really not a crime, right? So you can find many information about that in the website. And if you have time, you can explain more about that another day, right? So I'm a part of the coordinator team or the staff team of the Death Phone Groups here in Sao Paulo. And by the way, I'm talking from Brazil now, Sao Paulo here in my small office, in my balcony. As you can see here, my good vision, I like this vision, by the way. And I'm instructor of the Hacker Security, it's a Brazilian company. And I'm instructor of the Mar Analysis course there. And I'm instructor and write and reviewer in this free magazine and by the way i have the course of the malware attacks um with the strategy with the q chain in Pentest magazine right so just information about me if you'd like to see more information so you can find in my social medias okay so this is our agenda during this day so first of all i'd like to put all those people in the same page basically to explain more about what is thread so change your mind i would like to provoke you about this uh thing and some responsible disclosure because I will, I will talk about the crowd strike and attack actions, API manipulations, invokes using by the Microsoft, using the uh, Microsoft invokes, right? So the through process actually in, in the infection process, process in the end and the question the end of this presentation, right? So just to be clear, my idea here is not to give you what the best solution that you can use in your uh, ATR or your antivirus solutions know that my idea is not to explain that, just to explain how you can use it, your creative mind in a different uh, ways or a different efficient and detection test. Because when you need to, to test some product in your environment, for example, when you test using some POC pro of concept, usually it, it's not makes sense for me because how you can prove that this solution is it's really efficient for your environment you need to receive some attacks during the poc but it no makes sense because it's difficult you don't know if you are receiving some attacks or not so because of of this it's important you create your kind of tests to test to practice these tests or to perform these tests in different solutions not only how to strike but you can test it for example in cyber reason trying micro or semantic or and not semantic you know, it's not a different name as i think it's a, a broadcom right and uh, a mcafee or casper sky or another you know solution that you can imagine okay so that's my idea just to clarify okay 
So what is exactly a thread? This is the main topic here. Just to put all those people on the same page, it's not my definition, it's the definition according to this ISO, okay? So thread is defined as a potential cause an incident may cause arms in the system or organizations, okay? So, I mean, it's all, usually it's, it's, the, it's related to a software attacks because oh, it, this software can be, you know, exploited or using some malware to explore the victim machine, but in the end of the day, they will exploit some systems and probably the system has software. So maybe the threat is related to a theft of intellectual property. So when you are I'm a company responsible to provide or to create some product, and probably you have some intellectual property of this product, okay? So the theft of this intellectual property, it's, it, it, it is a threat, okay? I think the theft, because of this, many companies now, um, are applying the zero trust concept using in uh, identity access management and privilege access management because the identity of the company is pretty pretty important right and sabotage it's another different threat okay because uh, probably when you expose some informations in the internet so maybe it's from the attacker or maybe it's a sabotage from the you know some uh, malicious guy or red actor and information distortion or example all the information security threats okay so just to put all those people in the same page other people another point is when you need to execute something related to our analysis the first idea is to need to identify uh, the artifact because we don't know if the malicious or not you have the artifacts this is the important is the identification step so you can see if it's malware malicious software or maldoc just to a simple explanation okay and after that you can define what the best methodology to apply in this analysis if you, you use the statistic analysis or dynamic analysis of course you need to study more deeply about uh, each one of these methodology that you can apply in this analysis because you can using tools to help you comments and, and different uh, ways okay and my suggestion and you create a report no matter the action or task or activity you execute but it's important you prepare a report because you need to have something to present in to your manager your coordinator because after that you can create a, that i, I call the provision improving defenses mechanism because probably when you analyze some artifact in your environment you can see what is exactly the network or not the network but what exactly the path that are the attacker using in your network for example what kind of bypass the attacker using in your uh, environment okay so because of this you can prepare a report and you can improve your defense mechanism and of course you can create the cyber threat intelligence in your environment because you can build it right you, you can uh, working better to proactively in a product proactive way way okay and of course you will be strengthening the cyber resilience because the threats are changing all the time okay this is the simple definition so change your mind this is my uh, uh, you know my idea to provoke you now to, to changing uh, to give you a changing about this because uh, usually when you talk about this topic cyber threat hunting in the market usually talk about the guy working in a SOC, in security operation center, or many, uh, maybe in a support team, or maybe inside of the blue team. But my su now I suggest, and my idea, you know, it's a brainstorm here, uh, that you can use the hunting more related to a researcher, right? Because, of course, the log is pretty important, but how the threads works, how the malware works exactly more deeply, okay? So when you understand this, when you have in this your mind, you can create a different efficient and a detection testing in the security center sensors. Remember, this is the main point here in our conversation in this day, okay? So threat hunting is a proactive approach to cyber defense with a what? A defense's mindset. This is my idea talk about the cyber defense but with the offensive mind when you use the process proactively and interactively searching through the network to attack and isolate advanced threat so but to understand about the advanced persistent threat you need to understand how the threat is and how the binary on the malware on the kind of attacks works and when you understand that remember this is the mindset about that you need to understand about this threat not of course the log is important because no log is no crime you know it's a, a kind of joke but but it's true you need to have the 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 logs to investigate okay but how the exactly binary works what kind of dll you can find inside of the binary to to have the the real track 
more deeply inside of the binary. This is the mindset here. This is my idea from this uh, topic when you talk about the hunting, malware hunting. It's more related to a malware hunt. So how you can hunting the malware, okay? What is a hunter? It's a person, right? So it's a qualified security professional to recognize, but to recognize they need to understand how the known threat works. And of course, when the professional, the security professional know how the known threats works, they can recognize the unknown threats or unknown behavior. Okay, so after that, they can isolate and disable a potential APTs, the acronym of the Advanced Persistent Threat. Okay, it's more advanced using a manual or maybe a, a intelligence art or artificial intelligence based on techniques or different kind of tools to using to help you to identify and this. Uh, kind of techniques and detecting and monitoring in the, in the network. So oh, he can, or this professional, it, it's, can uh, search for a possible internal, take a look at that, internal or external intruder. But uh, nowadays we have an internal intruder much, much time because, and of course, depend on the, the, the step or not the step, depending on the phase of this attack is it happened external when the attacker tried to explore the perimeter or maybe they are in the insider of the your in your environment inside of your perimeter right so this professional it's uh, have the capability capability to identify this kind of uh, attacks okay so i'd like to explain about the two different techniques using the malware hunting or threat hunting. First of all, based on the IOC, maybe this is very known in the security community and the security or info security market, okay? And um, it's an indicator of compromise, it's pretty uh, known, it's, but in this case, it's always related to the post attack. So you already suffering, uh, you, you already suffered the attack, okay? And after that, you can collect the domain, IP address, link it to this website, you are linked to some phishing or part of the, some checksum in your, or, or the value of the checksum uh, related to some malware or what kind of uh, email it was delivered when you have. So some indicators included, like a suspicious on, on, on or known hostile domain or IPS suspicious, or maybe a signatures to detect the suspect, suspected or no hostile data. It's pretty important, such as antivirus or IDS signatures. But as you can see here, usually is related to the post uh, attack, okay? Or data related to a potential exploitation of a vulnerability exploit, like a, um, you know, like re um, related to some CVE IG, okay? That you have that you can find or it's known by my tree um, and. Uh, another indicator is that using that some tactics and techniques and procedures associated with with a, a suspicious or no host to events uh, or such some unauthorized uh, tools like a meme cat for example or you know uh, when you see this in your environment this tool is executing in your environment but you don't have any offensive uh, uh, security team in your environment so if you see here and not in your environment, not here, but when you see in your environment, maybe you need to see because probably you are suffering some uh, exploitation or, or some people or some intruder to try to collect the, the credentials in your environment. Okay, so this is the technique based on IOCs. And, and you have the malware information sharing platform, the acronym is MISP, that you have the thread sharing platform. It's a free and open source software helping information to sharing with the community. It's pretty nice because here you can collect and you can share with this indicator of the compromise okay here's the link of the project probably already know about that i've already heard about that and here's the picture that i this picture is from google okay so from the internet so no worries about that so you don't have any uh pii here or any information about the customers okay so and it, it just to, to show you the simple log here and uh, as you can see here, the event is from lock key. Maybe it's a, a short letter, but it's a lock key. It's kind of ransom. And as you can see here, different events, different um, informations 
related to this some url and that you can using this kind of attack so here as you can see some event informations the, the url and uh, here the title of the email so different indicators related to this iocs remember this is one of these techniques using an entrady hunting okay and another uh, techniques is based on, on the eoa okay it's indicator of attack it's solely and behavior on the focus if they focus on why it's a nice because you can ask because it's a focus in behavior the idea of the eoa is based on the attack before happened it's a pretty important to understand right because here you can use it in a proactive way before they happen some attacks in your organizations okay and, and based on the intention of the attacker okay it's more technique strategy it's more looking deeply based on tactics and techniques and procedures the famous ctps okay uh, when properly position and in more mature intelligence program so remember and these eoas it's more related to the intelligence and the, the questions so you need to understand more deeply because you can see some suspicious behavior you can investigate to investigate more before happen some attacks okay some some indicators include the real behavior okay not limited on the endpoint behavior analysis is a different when you have some function function inside of the, the antivirus you have this behavior monitoring or intelligence or machine learning whatever name you prefer use you have this in endpoint but the real-time behavior, like uh, how you can see the Windows event, right? So uh, how you can monitoring this different behavior, how you can set some tags in your environment to see this suspicious behavior, okay? Another is the code execution method data or some, an, an, again, some DLLs or dynamic link libraries called. So how you can see the sequence of the events all the actions you can find or how you can see this kind of action in your environment right suspicious and user behavior in relationship to the digital thread so some different behaviors based on some users uh, or maybe some accesses by these users in a known work time for example right so how we can see and remember why it's based on the why why these users I working at this in this way okay and the TTPs tactics and techniques and procedures procedures linked to the hostile data such as a malware used in some attacks and persistent and health components as you can see some uh, different components in your I don't know uh, Windows task manager or for example using in some attacks and let's see some indicators I would like to give you 10 example okay some internal hosts with a bad destinations it's pretty common to see internal hosts to try connecting in a bad destinations about different countries that you don't have any business uh, with this country so why have happened this okay so internal hosts with a no standard port it's very common too because again so why did these internal hosts are uh, requesting some access in an unknown st known standard ports and the public server and DMZ to to internal hosts or, or I mean to try connecting internal hosts if you don't have any services or processing and these different uh, servers okay of our malware detection it's a known it's not common uh, time um, for example you don't have any uh, jobs at 1 a.m and why you have you can find many tentatives of the attack in this exactly time okay network is cutting by the internal host if you don't have any security offensive teams okay multiple alarms events for a single host it's pretty nice here i have some examples i can explain in another time with you but you have a one single host but it's receiving or having many different alarms the system is reinfected with the malware so what kind of also why these systems are infected and different malwares is the same malware different techniques so why remember based on behavior even you you, you can block it pay attention to this even you can block it the access it's not a problem but you can block it you, you maybe you are thinking okay but i block in the tentative so why i need to investigate because you need to ask him why this same system are trying to be infected by someone so why even you were blocked 
but you need to remember when you talk about the advanced persistent threat, it's not a short, short time attack, it's, it's a long time attack. So the attacker can, or, or the threat actor, will try to in, in fact, infect you a long time. So because of this, we need to understand and you need to ask yourself about the why. Okay, so multiple logins from different regions. It's, it's, it's a simple question, right? It's a simple point here because we want one person. It's impossible to make a, a multiple logins in different regions. Okay, internal host they use a much uh, SMTP protocols, right? So <laughs> that you have one SMTP server, or maybe you have more than one, but uh, a different internal host to try connect. You know, internal host using many queries to external and internal DNS when you have some one or through or two DNS. So why you are having internal host to try connect or to try using another external DNS. So pay attention to this. And okay, so first of all, I will explain the idea of the threads and the hunting to suggest to some something related to a change your mind. Why I do that? Because this is the mindset that I'm using when I execute these tasks. Remember, I, again, I will, re, I will uh, clarify one more time. It's not to explain what the best solution is, like strike, yes, you know, SOFOs or, or silence or whatever solution you have or Microsoft. No, not my idea here during these presentations. I made these tasks in different sensors, like CompStrike, like a SOFOs, like a Cyber Reason, right? So, and I, I realize, I, I not realize, I execute this uh, task and I present the report for all those vendors. I just would like to explain this process and this company called CrowdStrike. So I, this is the response, responsible uh, disclosure about this. So I reported this in this, the first report that I presented to the CrowdStrike at October 2020. As you can see here, the data and the time. And uh, by the way, the email as uh, I, I wrote in Portuguese because I reported for the Portuguese team in that time. OK, so I explained so sorry uh, for the time because it's too late. How we we talked in our conversation, our call, because I called to the <clears throat> the manager. OK, I started this week to do some testing about the detection an efficient test with the call strike. Right. It's a POC, as you can see here. But I explained to the uh, to the construct team that I will execute some efficient tests. If I bypass some, the solution, I will prepare a report and I, I will submit this report to the company. Okay, so I'm writing here. I, I'm saying I'm sending two reports in English, uh, right by me and, and the equipped and, and the team from the Zoop Security Labs. This is my previous job. Okay, and uh, that we execute these tests. So some important information. The first is that. Uh, we the solution not block at the same hour called VBS using the VBS that I will show you here during the presentation. And the second test we can uh, in the second test we can have another infection using another malware in M uh, MSA from the malware bazaar report. I mean, I using two different reports here and the, the zoo testing. It's a GitHub repository with many malware that you can find there and the more bazaar another search of the malware all those my tests and my course i always use in the real malware because it's in this way you can really uh improve your skill and you can try and you can prove if this solution is efficient or not okay so here's some impact that i explained to the count strike not detected by signature base and depend, dependence of the real-time engine, engines. So for my side, it's dangerous because you need to test the, the malware and in the same time, the engines work. It works if it, the engine doesn't work. So what happened? You will be infected. So this is some impact that I explained to the CompStrike. And take a look at their answer for the vendor, so, right? We just received a generic answer on Wednesday and uh, the next day. OK, our technical team analyzed the points and we didn't validate them then as a validated test for the solutions. Okay, You take your conclusion and uh, this is the printing in Portuguese, the answer. So I just translate for you and the construct team send me some some links about the tests of the solutions. Uh, executing by the 30 parties and the market market global okay so here's some reference that showed me but i explain again okay i agree about this test but i, I perform my test here in my way i explain all those steps all those steps i publish and now after the disclosure time okay 
and it's not a validation test okay but i continue to to, to talk with the team i open the support case and after three months that you can see here the data i received this answer from the vendor the final answer Felipe, I'd like to thank you for your submission. It has been forwarded to our internal team for a full review and modification or creating additional capabilities in Falcon and Falcon, uh, should they be necessary. As you are not a current customer, so here it's making, you know, I'm disappointed here in this in this phrase, okay? Uh, this, is my, this is my opinion. Uh, you can just not agree with me, no worries about that. But I, I, I was disappointed at that time, okay? I, uh, as you are not a currently customer with uh, active support subscription, however, you can, we can't, uh, we cannot provide you with any further information or results. So what can I do in this case? So uh, they suggest me to talk with the equip the account team, but I don't have account team because I'm not a class customer. I'm I'm doing the POC to try to be a new customer, but it has to imagine how the results in the end of this tests, right? And uh, fortunately, we we don't now we don't we don't know. Uh, we don't know, um, we don't have a um, we don't have the current solution actually okay so this is the answer from the vendor so okay let's talk about the actions of the attack that i performed in this environment okay so the purpose was execute a several year efficient detection tests again in our lab environment to protect with the any point solution provided by ground strike this document brings the result of the defense security analysis with the offensive mind remember that this is the idea here Offensive mind using a reverse shell techniques to gain the access inside the victim machine. So this is the first two tests, and after that, to performing a malware in a VBS to infect the victim machine through using some script in a PowerShell to call the malware in our environment. Take a look at that that I'm using many behavior in malware in my uh, laboratory environment because the the purpose of the tools exactly works in a. Uh, uh, you know, in the real time behavior. So I execute this in this way. So the first uh, shell that I'm executing, the simple Python script, as you can see here, I import this. Uh, you can check this uh, in the internet. I don't remember exactly uh, directory because I'm not creating exactly this code. I have here, in, I, I saw it in the internet, but I, I don't remember exactly uh, where I found this code. I just made some adjustment in the code, some parameter here but it's not my created to the in the beginning okay but basically it's import of the uh, the same uh, I, EOS and socket basically this attack is open a socket as you can see here right to connect it in this uh, IP address it's my IP address on the attacker machine and open this uh, 1770 port as you can see and I you uh, open this process Windows system 32 it's uh, administrator administrator access in this case so I have a all privilege to access in this case okay so the simple shell that i'm executing this so as you can see in in the as you can imagine when you have tried to infect that your in, in environment so if you have an antivirus solution it should be detected right because you will want to open a socket in your environment and it's a it's a known behavior using by the attacker okay so let's explain here the first demo that i will explain so first of all this is my machine and by the way i record all those tasks because it's very important to show to the vendor and always when i execute some testing i try i know i try i record all those tasks and after that i present you to the the vendor because i will explain all those steps so first of all i set here i not set but i i I show here my IP address of the Vitman machine, about the, the user connected here, and the information about the system infos. Okay, this is the first idea. It's a Microsoft Windows 10 Pro. It's, um, you know, it's actually it's updated solution here, as you can see, and all those informations about this machine. Okay, the call, I call it ready hunting repository and, and so on. Second, I will explain about some directory and uh, some files here let me check here ah, okay i will delete this this file here the vbs underscore q i think i will delete okay yes i will delete this here because i will after i will recording i will transfer after that as you can see okay i have here the shell.php uh, php no sorry shell shell.python my script as i mentioned okay but first i would like to show you 
the, all those policies apply in this laboratory, apply in this uh, Bitcoin machine as I will show you, okay? So first of all, I will open, by the way, the Process Explorer to show you about the behavior about this system operation, so how this system operation works. So first of all, this is my machine, Windows 10, as you can see, and the host name is Freddy Hunting, and you can find here the sensor version that I am using in this test. So first of all, I will go to the preventing policies to show you about all those policies that I am applied in this uh, environment. So one important thing is here is I apply the best practice from Construct. So I'm using this best practice to apply. But as you can see here, one host uh, protected by these policies and this um, this host is my host to protect us, as you can see here. So all those uh, features is enabled, as you can see here. So if you see here, take a look at your post the video here and take a look at this. When you talk about the cloud antivirus malware, and here you have the Edward and Pup uh, kind of malware. And as you can see here, you have a de detection in an extra aggress aggressive. And then the cloud and tomorrow, the same case, extra uh, aggressive. And if you see here, the next generation antivirus category by cloud machine, cloud machine learning, probably based on this um, engine. Okay. As you can see here, another um, the cloud antivirus. And that uh, you can see here, it's totally extra aggressive. I mean, it's, I apply it the more aggressive to detect. So I need to have uh, the, the logs about some information. The next generation antivirus, the same case is extra aggressive. It's totally uh, paranoid, right? You know, paranoid applications of the policy, as you can see. In this case, it's called strike not recommending to put in the extra aggressive. Why? Because probably you have a false positive, right? But I am trying to block my tentative because of this i put in the extra aggressive and i can talk now as you can see here the ransomware applications okay the ransomware behavior take a look at that they have the answer behavior exploit mitigations as you can see here it's enable okay exploitation behavior enable so all those things is the solution is totally enable okay and after that, I will show you here the process of the construct running. As you can see here, the Falcon container and the Falcon services, two services responsible to execute the engines inside of the Victor machine. And again, I'm sure I'm show you here in the process explorer. It's small because it's a recorded, okay? But just to show you about that, this is the Victor machine. So the second point is I will show you my attacker machine. This is my attacker machine. I will open the 7070 port one more time and I will listening in this port, this communication using a Python. So I'm using a Python, simple Python script, and I execute this, open the process in a, in a red, uh, in a green color, as you can see here, and take a look at this the process. It's not too high in a CPU. And after that, I open a socket. And now I gain the access in the Bitcoin machine, as you can see here. So I have here the information inside of this Bitcoin machine. I have the control of the Bitcoin machine. So I'm just simple like that. I execute the Python script, call it and as some, some Python script, open a socket using a TCP, okay? Again, the access in the Bitcoin machine. But as I show you, all those policies uh, is applied, as I show you, okay? And as you can see, not detected this simple behavior okay and by the way malicious behavior so after that i go to the desktop folder here and i will create a simple uh, joke as i show you here we don't have any files created here in the desktop and after that i will create a simple folder not folder simple file here and i call um loose dot text just a simple joke okay and uh, as you can see here uh, and after that i execute this and all those things is right in the Victor machine. And if you are returning the Victor machine, as I will sh show you here, take a look at that. I have this file here. And if I minimize here, I can see the file here. So I have a control in my Victor machine. Okay. So the second test is API manipulation. So I am here in the Victor machine. So what kind of I gain the access using the reverse shell. So the next steps I will using an API manipulation. So I would like to call 
um, some malware or something in some repository okay so i using a this uh, api manipulations using a vbs underscore q dot ps1 so basically this is scripted power in powershell using uh this api manipulation by the um, our bazaar um, repository i don't know if you know but i can share the link after this presentation but by the way i will using this api to call something and what i will call this hash file i will set this, this hash file and when i after i am yeah, i'm s s seeing uh what kind of path i have in my victor machine in this case i have this path because in the video when i infected the victor machine i found this path I can using this to download my VBS underscore Q and I can using the two different invoke requests. Okay, just to explain about the API manipulation. But before is a good API manipulation, I will need to um, call this PowerShell because this PowerShell is not in the Victor machine. It is my attacker, attacker machine. So I need to download, I need to transfer this file from my attack machine to the victor machine so this is i will explain in this the second video okay so i have the access in this machine as i show you here so the next step is i need to transfer this powershell in my my attacker machine to the victor machine so this is i will open the any grog to put in my um web my 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 machine in the internet and i'm i'm a simulate a kind of command and controller here in this case because i open this servers right so I, I open this and i forward my local machine to this any grog website right so based on where based on the us and when i execute this test i am in the in brazilian by the way so i will open my service and put in the us remember my environment is and is one is in in brazil and when i perform this test so I will here execute. I will check just about the file. Some file, as you can see here, this is the folder. This is the file vbs underscore q dot powershell, as I mentioned. Okay, and uh, using API manipulation. So I will pass here as I'm explaining you. And this is the URL that I can move my uh, malicious powershell, malicious powershell using API manipulations to send something remember in the script i will send something using this powershell remember this and so the next steps i need to call this i need to call this folder i need to call this file okay so i will call the powershell because this is a true process in the victor machine are you using a uh, invoke web request but i will explain the next demo okay but are you using this to invoke this URL, this URL using my command and controller server, okay? Based on where, based on US. So that's the second step. Step I will access my command and controller in US, as you can see here, and I will download my file through the Victor machine. And as you can see here, you have the get access, and as you can see here, you have the request in my any Krog server okay so in this moment i have here my file inside of the victor machine as you can see here so now i have my powershell inside of the victor machine but remember i manipulate requests inside of the victor machine okay so the next step is using evox as i use in here the web request so that let me explain about the code one more time so again, this is using an API. Remember, this API or this PowerShell, I will call this file. This file is a VBS malicious, okay? And I will using the invoke web request to execute this to request something in some places inside of this uh, machine. Has I used in this uh, before in this another demo to transfer? my malicious code in my cc i using this invoke request okay and the second invoke i will be using the invoke expression to call the target folder and to set the hash file because this file that i will download i will need to invoke this i need to ex execute this file in the victor machine automatically 
right? So I will execute this and I call the file setting the VBS file because I know that this file is a VBS file, okay? So this is the second expression, okay? So let me explain the infection process based, based on, on this malware. So this malware has a code, okay? If you try to copy this code and pass in, in, in doc text, when you have some antiviral solutions based on, on, and the, on the signatures, always, usually always, antivirus will detect it has a malware. Why? Because this VBS is known as a malware in more than 50 engines by the virus total. Remember this information. I can share with you. You can check this hash and you can put this hash in the malware, in virus total and you can check. This is a malicious malware. It's not a new attack. It's an old attack. It's a malware, okay? Based on VBS. And take a look at this code. It's pretty interesting. As you can see, the create extension. So the malware will changing the extensions in the Victor machine. Type extension. They will change all those extensions in docx, in doc, xls, and the mp3, and text, and jpeg, and uh, another is uh, text. So as you can see, they will execute this action, malicious action, the very similar behavior that Hansler have, right? So you can agree with me. And they will using created this object using and 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 basically and Windows script uh, process right so using the VBS scripting the Victor machine okay so this is the simple code model so let's see about this attack so remember I have my file now my VBS in the Victor machine I will be using a PowerShell now to execute this PowerShell in the Victor machine but. <clears throat> First of all, I put the, <laughs> the VBS and I, some error happened. Why? Because I need to set here the, the doc and, um, and the slash here to execute the PowerShell because of this, this error. And um, I will pass, I will type again. So PowerShell, I will call the PowerShell as you can see and doc slash. And after that, I will call, I'll call my malicious folder and take a look at this. The, the PowerShell it's running one more time in the Victor machine. So and after that I will call again the API as I mentioned. I will download this hash is malicious. This is the malware. Okay. And after that as you can see that you have the invoke expression. The, the malware will execute automatically inside of the Victor machine. So as you can see here take a look at this the WP script running in the Victor machine. So the solution didn't block it at this moment now. So as you can see, the Windows scripts are running. And take a look at this, the, P, the PD here, and take a look here, the, the information in the Victor machine. So the CPU, take a look at this, it's high CPU. It's growing the CPU, as you can see here. It started in 49, but now, as you can see here, in 70, 76, uh, better, 67, sorry for that. and. As you can see, you have the high CPU. If you see here in the Victor machine, think a look at what happened here in the CPU. In my process running, the CPU is too high. It's growing. And if I try to open uh, another uh, task manager, as you can see here, it's not a possible. Why? Because the CPU is too high in this case. And I try to open the task manager to show you how to the Windows script, but impossible to open because the CPU is too high. Something are happened in the background of this uh, in this big machine, as you can see here. So let's see what happened. So let me go to the more in the end of this presentations and uh, just to show you here. Okay, I am. No, before, let me go here, let me return here just to show you. Okay, I will show you about the connections in this Victor machine and I will return here. And take a look at this, all those files are changing to the VBS. Remember that we have a different files here. So if I show you here, remember all those files is in, in PowerShell, let me pause here, okay. You have here payload.txt, binary in PowerShell, you have here in a Tor doc C in the in the C program language in a Python. So we have here in the Victor machine different files, right? So Avio doc VBS, and after this uh, infection, as I show you here, all those files it were changed by doc VBS. Remember in the malware code, 
all those exchanges is will be changed to doc VBS in we, we saw in the code okay so if you return here in our desktop one more time remember the file that I created take a look at this doc text doc VBS so our files are changed by VBS the infections the infection happened the customer it was in fact that as you can see here if I try type take a look at this I don't have any other information inside that okay so if I see here the files are infected if I try to see about the folders take a look at this all those folders all those files that I have inside of the machine my tools in these internals take a look at this all those files are changed the machine is totally infected as you can see here so the solution didn't detect that so and after that i reported all those informations to the the vendor but unfortunately i don't have any informations related to this so i execute this and i finish my presentations i think so here's some recommendations book usually the people asking me about the, some recommendations about this topic so this is a, a pretty nice uh, books that you can see you can you can you know try find some information about that and uh, I have, by the way, these two books. It's a pretty nice and some recommendations. And okay, I finished my presentation here. If you have any questions, so please let me know. One more time here, my contact on social medias and uh, my web page. So if you have any question, please let me know. Thank you for the organization team for this opportunity. And uh, thank you one more time and see you in the next event.